Hi, I'm Ilana. I was the civil engineer for Stanton and Blouch. Hola, my name is Gilberto Torres. I'm from San Diego and I'm the safety engineer for our project. I mainly focused on doing the earthworks calculation for the entire site. Ni hao. I'm Hao Chen Chen. I'm the environmental engineer in this team and I come from China and I am responsible for the sustainable part and the environmental impact assessment part in this project. Hola, my name is Alison Vargas and I was a geotechnical engineer for Satin and Blatch. Hello, my name is Natalie Rios and I was the water engineer for our fire station project. Hello, hello. My name is Willie Viscandarani and I am the construction engineer for Stanton and Blatch. Caitlin Kirkup, I am the project manager of Stanton and Blatch, and I also did the traffic analysis. We are inspired by Nora Stanton Blatch, who was the first woman who was allowed to be in the American Society of Civil Engineers. The background of our location is that it is located right next to the South the Chula Vista Library on 341 Orange Avenue, and it is between 4th Avenue and 3rd Avenue. Here's our proposed site location. It is approximately 52,000 square feet or 1.2 acres and also the existing fire station 5 is one mile away and we are going to be replacing that with our new and improved fire station. And now I will discuss the traffic analysis. So first we had to figure out our product location. It is between Orange Avenue and 4th and we needed signs on Orange Avenue. Next we needed striping based on median improvements on Orange Avenue. We also needed to make sure the turning radius would work for all three of the trucks and we also need emergency traffic signals. And for the signs, we use California MUTCD standard signs, such as no left or U-turn, no right turn, no pedestrians, and no parking, and do not enter so that nobody would block the fire station. Also, we needed to make sure we had warnings ahead of time so that you know there's an emergency signal ahead for the fire station, and right on the traffic signal, it'll say emergency signal, as well as the fire station driveway. Next, this is where the signs will be placed. So some of them will be placed on the traffic signal, some of them will be placed ahead of time, some of them right in front of the station, such as do not enter. And for striping, these two existing concrete medians are going to be removed and they will be replaced with a proposed painted median strip. And each lane, as you can see, is the same width as it was before. So we're keeping that. And the turning radius is shown for each truck so the trucks need to make a 90 degree turn angle and they need to make sure that they can make it out as well as back in and we were successful in calculating them. And lastly, we did the traffic signal design. So we need three traffic signals right in front of the traffic station. These will have proposed preemption detection devices for the trucks and these will be connected to the existing traffic signals here at 4th and Orange. The existing site includes a public dog park with a fence barrier, a parking lot, 10 white posts, an at and cell tower, an electrical building, and a concrete medium, which are all to be demoed. There is an existing inlet which will be replaced by a diverter inlet in order to divert both rainfall runoff and wastewater. The proposed site will include a 12,000 square foot two-story fire station with three apparatus bays, a concrete paved entrance and exit driveway, 19 parking stalls, which will be 9 feet wide and 18 feet long, street modifications, and BMP implementation. The site will be graded in order to provide positive drainage away from the building. The fire station will sit at a fixed elevation of 88 feet. The proposed exit driveway will have a 5% slope towards Orange Avenue. The back driveway will have a 2% slope down towards the diverter inlet. The entrance driveway will slope 3.5% towards Orange Avenue. While the other half of the driveway will have a 1.5% slope towards the diverter inlet. So now I'm going to talk about the earthwork grading. Um, the process of earthworks is to excavate the existing land to a suitable level so that construction may begin. So the grading calculation was broken into three parts. Fire station is part one, um, south side of the fire station is part two, and the north side of the fire station is part three. So in these exhibits, um, the yellow line represents the green elevation that we are going to be looking at. And it was chosen from the highest elevation horizontally and vertically. And um, so for part one, you can see the proposed fire station looking at it north view. And here you're gonna be able to see the existing grading and the finished grade. And as you can tell, there's gonna be nothing but fill here, just pure fill.
for parts two and three, we're gonna be looking at it um, towards the east view, and it's the same process as before. But for here, we're gonna have um, on the south side, we're gonna have um, cut and fill, and for the north side of the fire station, we're gonna have um, the fill and cut as well. So the way I calculated um, cut and fill was by breaking each part into sections so that I could grab the average elevation for each section. By doing this, I was able to add and subtract the proposed elevation, giving me the um, total cut and fill volume. And lastly, just um, I added all three parts and I got the total volume for the entire um, site. By looking at our 100% submittal, you're gonna be able to see more in detail and visual how everything was calculated. Now I'm going to introduce you the sustainability of our project. First thing we need to do is the phase environmental impact assessment. So it includes the assessment to the current environment and the environment after our design. With regard to the USGB data, we ensure we, our project site is outside of the Chilofista sensitive environment, so it will not damage the ecosystem. And with regard to the EPA requirement, our project will not do too much impact to the current environment. The transport network is already built there, so we will not damage the um, uh, so, so level there. That reduces to our path to sustainability. The path is measured to see on the site credit checking table. According to our assumption, it can, it's going to reach the gold certification state. The highlight of this part is our recommendation on the Escape garden. It can save a lot of energy on management and watering. Then for the lead credit checking table, in our assumption, we also can reach the gold certification state too. And the highlight for this part is the solar power panel on the roof can save the electricity and reduce the cost. In addition, we got our public improvement plan and that's it. And now we will talk about BMPs. For this development project, we determined that a bioretention BMP and a catch basin insert would be required for stormwater management and pollution prevention. We determined with the San Diego County's BMP design manual that you would need a design capture volume of 718 cubic feet, a required retention volume of 14 cubic feet. Both the catch basin insert and the bioretention are expected to collect pollutants such as oils and grease, nutrients, metals, and more. As you can see down here, this is what a catch basin insert would look like. And on this side, you can see a bioretention BMP where water from impervious surfaces will flow into this bioretention BMP through the filter media into an underdrain or an overflow drain. And for geotechnical analysis, the soils underlying this site are as follows. Where the soil fell under a hydrologic group of C and D, composed of mostly sandy clay with a high risk of liquefaction and a resistance value of nine. As you can see on this side is an exhibit of where the boring samples were taken with the underlying soil type. Furthermore, these soil characteristics were used to determine certain design aspects of the project, such as the retaining wall required for the site, shown over here, as well as the pavement design for the parking lot and the BMP applicability, where we determined that no infiltration would be allowed due to the high risk of liquefaction. And now I will be elaborating on the hydrology study. Using the San Diego County Hydrology Manual, we calculated post-construction and pre-construction hydrology studies. As you can see, our post-construction runoff has will increase by 29% and 39%. Because of these numbers, we wanted to evaluate that our inlet and our pipe of the existing stormwater system will be able to handle it. According to our calculations, both the capacity of the inlet and pipe will be able to, to sustain the increase in water from the runoff. Now I will be discussing the utility plan design. Using Plumbing Code 2016 and Sweetwater Authority standards, we calculated a peaking factor of 1.2 and then decided that the water demand was 36.6 gallons per minute, the fire flow demand is 1,210 gallons per minute, while the wastewater produ production is 51.8 gallons per minute. Based on my calculations, the building lateral should be sized to 1.5 inch and it will be extending for 
feet until it reaches the main line. For the fire hydrant lateral, it will be sized to six inches per standard, and it would extend for 262 feet all the way to the main line. As for the wastewater lateral pipe, it will be sized to six inch. It would extend for 306 feet all the way to the main. It will be made out of PVC and maintain a slope of 2% all the way through. And now I'm going to take you on a run on our project's cost estimate. We had a rough estimation of $553,000 goes for the earthwork operation, with the site work including all the underground utilities of $62,500,000 to $500,000, and our general conditions fall at 282 with a contractor fee of 4% setting at $126,000, and our grand total estimated to be $3.38 million. And this is our project schedule, and we have a notice to proceed on May 20, 2019 with the contract awarded roughly on the same day. Our long lead items will take about 16 days to arrive and the order has been already submitted. The earthwork are roughly about 37 days and the superstructure will take about 83 days to complete. Our substantial, our substantial completion date is July 1st, 2020 and the total project duration is gonna be 13 months from start to finish. Here's our scheduled breakdown and here's the current schedule. 